Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. I am Sovereign and today we're going to talk about what to expect once T8 hits, what to look out for and what market items will explode in price. Remember to like and sub if you haven't already. We have a Patreon and membership button set up to help support the channel. And I'd like to thank Chenster who brought this idea to me. I'm just upset I didn't think of it myself. Now let's get right into it. Firstly, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the faction battleships. The Rattlesnake, Mercurial, Nightmare, Balgorn, and Vindicator. The Nesta and Space Pan of Death are still not available. Now these ships are massively expensive to build and even more expensive to lose. But on the plus side, all of the battleship skills, including weapon specific upgrades, have all been lowered from T9 to T8 as it was previously, even though you cannot build any other battleship till tier 9. So I, I just don't understand why they would have the faction battleships first. But I digress. All of these battleships have their place in the game. Balgorn for fleet fights with its newts, even though the Armageddon is a vastly superior ship in my opinion, with range being a much higher factor with battleships and the Balgorn having no newt or nos range ship bonuses, and the Armageddon getting both nos and newt range at 10% per level, which is massive on top of the electronic warfare range bonuses and its weapon disruptor strength and range. It will be disgusting. The Macarial, this ship is absolutely horrifying. If any of you join in on the fleets against the devs when they were using these ships with a 200 kilometer range and one shotting anything lower than a BC, the tracking and range is nasty and its bonuses to rate of fire this thing is the ultimate sniper ship. It will plow through encounter missions and players alike. Now we have the Nightmare. It has an absolutely disgusting tank. During the final test we got one up to 640,000 EHP. It'd be like taking down a station that moves and fires death beams at your face. If you have a fleet of Macarials sitting in this shield at 150 kilometers, it will be absolutely dirty. Now we have the Rattlesnake. I believe this ship has the same issues as the Gila. It has great drone range, large drone damage, but good luck hitting frigates. The bonuses also do not affect medium or small drones, which I find mental. It has really low missile damage bonuses, making 80% of this ship's DPS into two drones which are quite easy to kill even with the 200% drone EHP, making you lose 40% damage for each drone lost. Now I know what you're going to say, you can pull out more drones, good luck footing that bill. I foresee this ship only being useful in PvE where the drones do not get targeted and only in the T10 anomalies and encounters where they can actually hit the ships. And lastly we have the Vindicator. This is just a fatter, slower version of the Vigilant. I do not see this ship being of any use outside of a battleship versus battleship fight. The Vigilant would just be better at the same job as this. And with bubbles being rampant, a Thrasher Indicator is just much more useful for the same job. Please remember, these ships are not meant to be solo PvP'd in. And I really need to stress the fact that you should not solo roam in these ships. You will waste a whole hell of a lot of money and laughable kill mail in the Echo's Discord, Facebook, Twitter and Reddit within 30 seconds of it getting killed. Even though I know most people won't listen to me, so expect the faction wrecks to go through the damn roof in price, grab up all the ones you can right now because everyone and their mum who has reverse engineering skills will be buying these up in the first few weeks and selling the blueprints for a fortune. Also expect the minerals to shoot up in GTA, especially Megasite, and be ready for the 600 million is go button that will take five long days to finish. Right, with the faction ships out of the way, we move on to the interceptor ships. If you want to move highly expensive rig blueprints or modules without having to worry about literally anything in the game killing you, these ships are godly. Being immune to warp bubbles and having insta warp capabilities, you literally cannot be caught in this ship. Unless a gate breaks and you're AFK, or you make a mistake and buy a slasher 2 instead. The only downside really is its small cargo hold, but you can fit quite a few medium modules and unlimited amounts of blueprints and a handful of really expensive wrecks. I cannot tell you how important these ships will be for hauling the more expensive lighter objects. Okay, so moving on to the market. As I said previously, buy up all those faction wrecks and make a killing the first few weeks of T8. The T3 rig blueprints have already started to rocket up, but there are still some like the minor circulation 3s, the EM and thermal rig 3s, aerator 3s and collision 3s that are far below what they will be once T8 hits. And everyone starts buying up all the rigs they can. 
I personally have over 200 T3 rig blueprints of all kinds ready for the monies when T8 drops. A little bit of extra info, the large C-type weapons will also rise in price, so make sure to keep them ready and watch the market for them to explode, not just because of faction battleships, but because of the large weapon skills that will be accessible at T8 for battle cruisers like the sexiest but worst ship in the game, the Oracle. Speaking of C-type loot, when the November patch hits and everything becomes exponentially harder to clear solo, so the markets won't be flooded with C-type loot anymore, save up the loot in your hangars and watch the price go up. Little bit of side info for you there. We will also get some new hauling ships, but the hauling ships in Echoes need some serious love because they suck a major league genitalia. They are just horrible. They don't fit enough, they don't move quick enough. There's just so much risk for like almost no gain. I want to buy blockade runners now and not at T10. Please KK thanks. And last but not least, we get the T8 cruiser interdictors, also known as heavy interdiction cruisers. These ships don't require a launcher to shoot interdiction spheres, they are the launcher. What I mean by this is all you need in your hold is fuel and you are a living, breathing, moving 22 kilometer warp disruptor field. Keep an eye out for these as the overview doesn't show the full name on the UI at all. So you may be thinking you're going up against a normal Blackbird or Arbitrator and then you're triple webbed inside of a 22 kilometer bubble of death and decay that can chase you down. Gonna be so much fun. And that's all we have for today's video. Let me know down below if I missed something due to my Red Bull withdrawals. And remember to like and sub if you haven't already. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams.